Welcome to video 11.2 for the UOIT AEDT program's Adult Learning in a Digital Context course. In this video, we will examine the items you see before you on the screen. Before we begin, take a few moments, pause the video, and consider the following questions. As previously mentioned, like other assessments we have considered, Tests also serve as a means to gather evidence of student learning. And so we go back to the alignment of learning objectives, instruction, and assessment. Consider what evidence of student learning will the test hope to gather based on the learning objectives and related instructional experiences. You might want to consider creating a table of test specifications like this sim simplistic example introduced in video 11.1. This lists the content topics derived from the learning objectives in this dimension of the table and the cognitive processes to be addressed in this dimension. Again, this table is simplistic and only to demonstrate. It breaks down the number of test items that address the content and skills to include in the test that reflect the course content and skills in roughly the same proportion. And by doing so, this enhances the content validity of the test. In other words, does the test address the content that it is intended to address? Pause to take a closer look and consider what topic did the instructor spend the least amount of time addressing in the course? Why? Hopefully you see that since only 10% of the 10 items were devoted to the preparation of oxygen, we presume that 10% of the instructional experiences within the period of time that this test encompasses was devoted to the preparation of oxygen. If 40% of the instructional experiences were devoted to the preparation of oxygen, then this test or summative assessment is not fully assessing what it was intended to assess. This demonstrates the breakdown according to cognitive processes that comprise the test. This much of the test was devoted to remembering and the corresponding topic. Pause to view the number and types of test items will depend on several factors such as the actual content and skills to be measured, the number of students. If you have 400 students, is it realistic to have a fully based essay style exam? And how much time do students have to complete the test? And how much time do you have to grade the test prior to grade submission? So then we need to consider the format of test items. This goes back to the original question posed by Wiggins and McTighe. What is it that you wanted your students to learn or be able to do? This question is informed by the learning objectives. Let's start with the types of test items addressed in the resources for this week. Pause and consider what the advantages and disadvantages of each might be. Please go to this week's readings and read over the documents you, if you have not already done so. Pull them up and have them handy as this video will require you to go back and forth from the video to the documents. These documents are quite extensive and several examples will be drawn from this work. If they are not handy or open, please pause the video and open these documents prior to moving forward. This document by Mary Piontek lists the advantages and disadvantages of each type of test item and will help you determine what type of test item to include in your test. Rather than just reiterating what is written in these documents, which are quite extensive, please read about the advantages and disadvantages of each test item. This can be found on page two of this document. This can be found on page two of this document. It provides a good summary of the strengths and limitations of test items. Please pause to read about this CRLT occasional paper by Ma Mary Piontek. Let's start with matching questions. Please pause to read the criteria for a matching item. This column lists the problems and questions, and this column lists the responses. Your job is to connect them. This is based on what you just read about disadvantages and advantages of various test items. Pause and match. 
Here are the responses. How did you do? Do you really understand or did you guess? How effective did this type of test item assess your understanding? These are questions to consider in your own test item development. Once again, please pause to read this description. In this example, the first column lists an advantage or disadvantage statement, and the second column identifies the advantage or disadvantage. Again, pause to assess your own understanding and come back when you are finished. How did you do? Pause to read these more practical types of guidelines. Does this example meet the criteria? Pause to consider and then come back. Hopefully you see that for the most part, this example does contain these criteria. However, it does not have more responses. Consider the difference in completing this task now with this example. Pause to complete and consider. How did you do? Let's now go to true false types of questions. Please go to this document and read about true and false questions on pages 12 to 13. Once you're finished, please come back. Now let's look at this example. Based on what you just read, what is the problem? Pause to consider. As noted in the resource, the first item seems to have been extracted right from a textbook, whereas a better test item actually has test takers apply the information and come up with a response. Now let's look at this example. Based on what you just read, what is the problem? Pause to consider. What is this first test item trying to assess? Is it to assess students' ability to remember that the author of The Raven is Edgar Allan Poe, or is it to assess spelling? If this was a spelling test, then this might be appropriate. But if this is a literature class, then this does not seem appropriate for a host of reasons, but to trick students based on spelling is not consistent with guiding principles of assessment. Now let's look at this example. Based on what you just read, what is the problem? Pause to consider. Hopefully you realize that the use of the negative creates an unclear test item, as would words like always, all, and never. Now let's look at multiple choice. This example of a multiple choice question drawn from one of this week's resources identifies the key features of a multiple choice item. The stem, or the question statement, and the alternatives, which are comprised by one answer and additional distractors. Please now go to this document. It serves as an extensive document about multiple choice test items. Let's take a quick look. This document provides a very thorough examination of the anatomy of a multiple choice test item, as well as how to incorporate higher order thinking skills. Please pause, take a look at the document, and then we will examine some examples. Let's take a look at this example on page 15 of the document. Why is this a poor example? Pause to consider. First of all, as you have read, the stem should be in the form of a question or an incomplete statement. Since the stem is the foundation, this leaves the test taker wondering what the question is all about. Why is this a better example? Pause and consider. The problem is clearly identified in the stem and the choices. The, dis the distractors and the correct answer could all be potential options for the correct answer as they are written in a somewhat consistent fashion. Now go back to this document and please read pages three and four. Pages three and four provide excellent guidelines to consider when developing multiple choice questions. Once you are finished, come back for some examples. Take a look at this example. What are the problems with the stem using the document you just read as a guide? Pause to consider. Well, the stem is not clearly written as a question, problem, full statement, or task. The information is not clear and specific, nor does the stem contain a verb. The stem should have most of the information so that the options are short. Pause to consider how you might fix this. The next slide will show an improved version. Take a look at the revised version. How is this improved? 
there is a clear statement as to what the test taker needs to consider. There is a verb, the options are relatively shorter, and more importantly, the purpose of this question is to presumably assess the test taker's understanding of the NCAA basketball terminology. Examine this example. What is the problem? Is this clear? To what does best refer? Best from a cost perspective or an environmental perspective? How would you improve this? Now take a look at this example. How is this an improvement? As you can see, the best is removed and the specificity is increased to make the stem more clear. Piontek and Jacobs provide the following guidelines for creating stems. Please pause to read so that you can apply this to an example. Please pause to consider the following guidelines for writing responses to the stem. Yes, it is possible, but challenging to create. Again, if you are faced with a large number of students, you may not have a chance to provide opportunities for authentic types of assessment activities. However, it is possible to create multiple choice items that address skills other than remembering or understanding. Let's take a look. Please go to this document. It serves as an extensive document about multiple choice test items. As you can see, these examples on page 9 demonstrate how higher order thinking skills might be addressed in a multiple choice question. Let's now take a look at completion or fill in the blank and essay format types of questions. In a completion item, students answer a question by filling in the blank or respond to a question briefly using text. It can look like this. Pause to consider. Pause to consider this list of guidelines and then consider the example again on the next slide. How might this be improved? Pause to identify the problems in the example. This is vague as too many words are omitted. A multiple choice is comprised. What does this mean? The blanks are also deceiving because of the various lengths. And this grammatical clue allows the test taker to guess that the response will begin with a vowel. Please pause to read these guidelines on essay style items. Now go back to the document and please read the section on essay style questions that begins on page five. As you can see, this provides you with excellent guidelines to consider when developing essay test items. And some of it may be familiar, especially the components regarding how to carefully create assessment criteria. Here are some examples. Why is the first example a poor example of an essay style question? How is number two better? Again, consider the higher order cognitive processes like compare and contrast rather than identify or list. Essay style items could also include lower and higher order thinking skills. Consider the first examples. Now consider the second set of examples. What learning objectives underpin these two questions? There are all, these are all things to consider. Here's a summary compiled from Jacob's work. Please pause to consider this and the following slide. This video provided information regarding creating test items. Now that you have viewed the video, consider the following questions. This is what the video addressed. And thank you for watching.